and this is called Clips Demo. Um, in Clips Demo, you see I don't actually have any of those assets. I, I do have access to them, but I have four blank tracks, drums, bass, keys, and horns, and now I'm going to switch into the brand new Clips window. This is a new view and a completely new way of approaching work in Digital Performer. Um, I, before this demo, I drug in each of those two measure clips into the tracks, and I set them up at two measure loop points. I, can, I could have set it up a quarter note, whole note, two measures, all the way up to 32 measures. And now, I'm gonna play with these in real time, either cell by cell or scene by scene. And all I have to do is hit play. Here's my first drum loop. Now let's switch to a different drum loop. Or a different drum loop. And let's add in some bass. And some keys and some horns. Let's switch up the bass pedal. That doesn't quite go together. Or I can trigger the entire scene at once, like that. Or I can mute the bass. So there is tremendous power of working in this new Clips view. It is a very tactile, experimental, spur-of-the-moment way of working. It is ideal for improvisers. It also has some really interesting implications for live performance. If you've ever wanted to use Digital Perform on stage, and it is used in live performances throughout the world, but you're in a situation where the song structures may not be static, you might need to repeat that chorus an extra time on the fly without prior notice, you could use the Clips window to be triggering um, different sections of a song upon command. And as long as you set it up correctly with the right amount of uh, trigger delay, um, it will all be completely seamless. Um, so I've set up three and a half different scenes there with different audio clips loaded into each. This also works with MIDI. You can, you can put MIDI clips in here. You can put automation clips in here. Um, in one of the other demos, we saw a filter being applied on a master fader. So that could be applied on command at any, at any moment we want. It does relate to the traditional digital performer timeline. If these are our tracks and I have content here, let's say a click track in one of these that goes all the way across the entire song, in clips I could be triggering what's in the track or I could be triggering what's in the clips window scenes and I can mix and match. So I could have a combination of static tracks in the tracks and experimental clips that I'm coming in and out of. A really great way to to play with music from a completely different approach and be more experimental, be more improvisational. Also a great practice tool. Um, so we do have access to the mixer right from here so I can be putting effects on my tracks. Um, in the bottom pane here, I have access to details of every aspect of these clips. I can give the clips names, I can recolor them, I can give them a MIDI binding, I'll show you that in just a second. Um, I can change their loop points in and out, their durations and their meter. Um, let's talk about automation of the Clips window because that's, an, that's another really fun thing to do. In the Clips window MIDI menu, there is a MIDI learn mode. And if you engage MIDI learn mode, the, the whole interface darkens and only the elements that are MIDI controllable are now highlighted. So let's just say that with that first drum loop, I'd like to assign that to a key on my MIDI keyboard. I just touch it and it's assigned. And the other drum loop, a different MIDI key. And maybe this entire scene, a different MIDI key and so on and so forth. I can assign everything in here to a MIDI key or a remote control or a button on a pad controller. And by doing that, I now have remote control over my clips. And I could, I could be performing with this in real time. So there's a lot of really interesting implications for the clips window as a different way of working in DP. I'm very excited to see it implemented, especially because we can mix and match audio and MIDI freely in this new window.